Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and this is the continuation of the Old Man series. The fourth video total, but the third video about the hair. So the very first video, we talked about adding a mask, a literal mask. We've got this over here at the renders. Put that right over our footage to make us look old, or to make me look old, rather. And then we talked about adding a simple mask to mask around the parts of the footage that you want to change the color. And then in the last video, we talked about an advanced mask that followed the contours of complicated edges, such as each individual hair sticking out. And we use the footage in order to create this alpha mask here that you see. But this is only for one frame. If we move our timeline here, our cursor on our timeline, you can see that color doesn't move with our head. So that is what we're going to cover today. So back to frame one. And by the way, down here is my um, little keystroke indicator. I tried to put it in its own separate area here so that I don't have to keep moving it around or if it, it doesn't cover up anything. But since we have three different masks that we want to kind of animate all together, we've got left, right, and top. I'm actually going to duplicate this workspace here because I want to manipulate these areas so that we can see all three masks together. So I'm actually going to pull this one down here and then we'll line it up with that so that we can just pull that one over. And this one we're going to put eh, right about here I think. We can always adjust these but I'm going to split this twice and then on this one I'm going to put the right on this one, I'm going to put top, and then this one, left. Okay, and this is just so I can see and animate all three of the masks at the same time without having to continually switch from the menu here. Now, the, each of three of these windows are our motion tracking. That's what this is here. Um, and you notice we don't have see our motion tracking markers, but we have tracking markers, you can see here in the 3D view. Uh, and that's because we hid them. So uh, make sure you're on your tracking. You can also do this from here, uh, from any one of these. Uh, you just need to come over here, make sure you're on tracking instead of mask. But I'm just going to go back here, uh, Alt H to unhide all of them, and then we should be able to see them back over here. Now these tracking markers were created in the very first video of the old man face. So if you don't have them, you might want to go back and watch those to see how to put those on. But we're just going to assume that you have them and you've been following along. Now you can animate these masks without these tracking markers, but it's going to be a little more difficult because you have nothing to parent them onto. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll start with the top one here. I'm just going to A to select all of the points here in our mask. And again, we're on our mask. Make sure you're on your mask right now. And then I'm just going to click. And now I don't have to shift click. Of course, if I'm too close to one of the points, then it, it, you got to kind of have to maybe zoom in or finagle. But let's hit A to select all of them again. And then I'm just going to try and select this one. And I don't have to press shift or anything else. If I'm selecting the tracking markers, I'm the selection is different than selecting the mask, so I don't lose that selection of the mask. If I wanted to shift select the markers, I can do that. But I don't want to do that, so um, I'm just going to, uh, let's see, let's click out somewhere over here. And then I'm going to click this one, Control P to parent everything that we've selected to this marker. And since we've already tracked this marker, when we press play, you can see we already have the mask following at least this marker, which follows the head, generally speaking, which is going to save us a lot of time in animating. It's actually fairly done already for us. You can also come over here like this. Um, if I scrub through here, this one is moving a little bit too much back and forth. So let's go back to frame one to make sure, make sure you're always on the frame that you've started with. So if it's not frame one, just make sure that whatever that frame is, you're back on that. And then I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to select just this point. And you can select the point first and then the tracking marker or the tracking marker in the point. It doesn't really matter. But Control-P to parent this one. So now everything else is parented still to this, but then this point is parented to this. So then we play that. You can see that this point follows that one a little bit better. I can come over here and look at this one as well. And I don't know if selecting one of these points is going to help. Um, maybe on the cheek. No, that moves too much. Um, 
probably our best bet would be this one. So let's just select this and then that control P. Oh, see, I'm on frame 100. See, it jumped. So I'm going to undo that. Go back to frame one, control P. There we go. Yeah. The only problem with this is that when I raise my eyebrows, this kind of goes up, which means that this will go up. But eh, it's not going to affect it that much, I don't think. We can always change it. Cool. So these are all parented. Let's go ahead and parent the left and the right. So uh, select all of those. And I'm going to choose, let's see, we'll choose this one for now. Select all of them. Control P. Ah, and I did it. Not on frame one again. Dang it. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, undo that. Undo, undo, undo. Okay. <laughs> select all of them. Let's click this one. Back to frame one first, and then control P. Okay. All right. So that we got that following along. Fairly good. And let's see. I might... Yeah, let's do... Okay. Frame one. And deselect all of them. Select this one. And then that one is the one I want to parent. So parent and let's see yeah it's not too bad okay next one frame one select all and i'm going to select this one here because it's the closest to the side of the head control p and there we go all right so they're already all following along with the head well enough for now we're still going to actually have to animate them but not as much as if we didn't have anything parented okay back to frame one and now let's start our animation let's pull this up here a little bit and change this to our dope sheet and where it says dope sheet change that to mask and if you show the summary we can see we have left right and top and you're not going to actually be able to see any keyframes unless you open these here. Now you can keep this open or you can just have the summary here to reduce the clutter. Um, I'm going to keep it open for now. And so I'm just going to use this for reference. Um, let's see, is this blue good enough? I'm going to just make this blue a little bit darker just so that I can see where those masks, that mask is uh, pretty prominently there. Okay, so how do we go about animating this? Well, a popular method is just to go 10 or 20 frames, uh, s adjust everything that you need to, set a keyframe, do it again, 20 frames, 20 frames, set keyframes for every interval of 20 frames. I don't like to do that because it kind of just ignores my footage. And so I don't like to go by frames. I like to go by the footage movement. So like from one extreme movement to another. So when I move my head, so I start my head off like this and then it moves up and then it moves down, down, and then bop back up, and then down, and then down more, and then to the left, or actually to the right, and then back to the middle, up, down. So that's what I mean by the extremes. So you've got um, extreme up, extreme down, left and right, because that's going to be the time that you want to adjust your mask is when you go from one extreme to the other. So let's go back to frame one. Let's make sure we have a keyframe on all of these. So I'm just going to select everything here and we're just going to press I here. And that's only going to do the right layer. You can see we only have a keyframe on the summary, which shows everything underneath it and the right mask layer. So to do the other two, same thing, hover your mouse over here, I, hover your mouse over here, I. Now we have three keyframes total, one for each of them. But that's going to take way too long and be way too tedious if you do it that way. So let's pull up here a, another timeline, bring the timeline in, and just drag this all the way down. And we're going to use this auto keying. So once we click this, now anytime we make an adjustment, it will automatically make that a keyframe on whatever frame the playhead is currently on. So let's go to the next extreme, which was right before I go back down. So I got up and then right here, about 23. So then we look at our footage and we see where we need to adjust. Uh, we got some of my original hair poking out down here, maybe some on the sides. 
and some up here, and eh, not too bad up here, actually. Uh, maybe a little bit right there, some around the ears. Other than that, this looks good. Well, this actually, you can see it's spilling over a little bit too much onto the skin. So anyway, let's go ahead and adjust this here. Let's start over here. And you can just click and drag the points around, and you can see the effect that it's having. So I kind of like to put the hairline um, in between the regular point and the feather point here. Something like that, so it kind of blends together. Now this again, um, we're not actually going to be able to change this color just because of our masking, because the, our, our original mask isn't all the way white here. I'm not going to worry about that. So this is just going to be ignored for this tutorial. Uh, but we can mess with this area down here with our hair right around our ears. So I say our, our ears. Well, this is my ear. It's not a collective, commutative ear. <laughs> and that's all right. That's, that's not too bad. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this single hair here. I'm not going to worry about it for this tutorial. But you can see we have a right mask layer keyframe because we have adjusted this and we have our auto keying on. Okay, so next one, let's go to the top, see what needs to be done over here. Not too, oh yeah, look at this right here. I just missed that. Uh, so we're going to have to make sure that actually this probably partly, ah, oh, it's actually this one, I think. So let's see. Yeah. Bring that in a little bit. Maybe we'll pump that feather out there and bring this maybe down and this in. Just adjusting this to what our footage might have. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go over here. I'm not focused on every single little hair. If you can't see it like this, if you're not zoomed in, it's not really going to matter that that much. This one I'm going to I'm going to try to get this as much as I can. All right, so that's what we have here for that and you can see we've got the keyframes on there and if we go back and forth here, like this, you can see that that mask seems to be following nicely. Um, now we've got something here, you can see that. So in the middle, and I could either go back now and fix that for the uh, in between these two keyframes. So just kind of pull that up a little bit more and adjust that. Um, this one's bleeding over a little bit too much here. Let's that in or instead of going in the middle right now I can just go to the extremes all the way and then after we're done with the extremes go back in between those and that should be plenty of keyframes to have our mask follow along the hair so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm just going to go ahead and probably speed this up as I do uh, all of the extremes and you can kind of get the gist of what I'm doing also if you get to an extreme and you don't see that anything really needs to be changed, then you don't have to change it. Uh, that's why you have this as a reference. So if you get to the next extreme and everything is covered the way it should be and nothing is bleeding over, then yeah, you need to make a keyframe there. Or you can just manually make a keyframe uh, to save that the way it is and then move on from there. Okay, so right here, I think, um, is the last keyframe I need because the rest of that I don't really move a whole lot, just a tad bit. So we'll see. Let's see. Let's adjust this one here just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget to save it. And let's see what we have. So we've got, and unfortunately it won't play in real time here, so kind of have to scrub back and forth, and it's not too bad. But there are some problem areas you can see, and you can go back individually and fix those, like maybe, let's see, where did I see that? Again, it might be in between some of them here, like this one. Looks like this could be just popped out just a little bit there. 
and oh down here definitely this one and yeah just kind of go in between see if uh the in-betweens look good but there's another thing that you probably want to do while you're tweaking these and that is let's say you come across something from the very beginning you go back to the beginning you're like oh shoot i don't want this to be all the way over here well you have a problem now because the way the masks are keyframed is that for the entire right layer, if we just move one point, it doesn't just make a keyframe just for this point. It makes it for the entire thing. The entire mask is this one keyframe here. Actually, it's right here, the, the left one or the right one, which means that if I move this, we'll just do an extreme here. So let's move this over here just for demonstration purposes. Well. You've only moved it for this one keyframe, but remember every single other keyframe on the right is going to be keyframed at a different position way back up here. So if I go to the next keyframe, you can see, whoop, it moves right back to where it was. And you have you would have to do this click and drag for every single keyframe because we, the next keyframe you move it to, it's just gonna snap right back up there. And this can create a bit of a problem if you find something early on in the beginning that you've made a mistake on. But lucky for you, I have found the answer to avoid this. So let's go back here. Um, and let's go back to the beginning, actually. And let's say this is where we want it for the entire thing. We'll just come up here to Mask, Animation, and then rekey points of selected shapes. And actually, before we do that, what we need to do is make sure we have all the right ones selected. So just deselect everything and then select only the ones that you want it to apply to, which is awesome because you can just decide how many and doesn't have to be all of them. Don't select the one that you currently have the keyframe on. That'll mess it up. So make sure whichever frame your playhead is on, that one is deselected. And now we can come up to mask animation, rekey, points of selected shapes. I have set this as control R for my shortcut. It doesn't have a shortcut by default, but you can always set a, a shortcut for that if you want. So select that. And now when we move to the next one and then to the next one and then to the next one, it stays in its relative position. Of course, it's still gonna move along with the mask, um, but it's going to interpolate if that's the right word, your movement or your correction to all of the ones that you've selected. And this is super, super awesome. This is useful. Before I knew that this was a thing, I thought that animating masks was like the worst thing in the world to do because they're just so limited. And they are still limited in some degree compared to other types of animation in Blender. Um, but this definitely helps. So um, of course, I don't want it that way here. I'm going to bring this back to the position that I had it to begin with. Same thing, everything I want is selected. I'm gonna use my Control R shortcut and that will rekey that and that should stay up there like that. So that's another thing to keep in mind while you tweak these that you can go back and fix your mistakes like that if you'd like. Other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and finish tweaking these and then we will see what we have as a result. Okay, there we go. And back here. All right. So let's pull this over here like that because we don't need that right now. So now we can just adjust the color accordingly. And that is what we'll do in the next video.